Hi, everybody. Radical Gardener. Uh, let's see. Today is Tuesday, June something, 20th or something. Whatever. Um, so I want to show you what's going on in the garden. Everything is going so, so well. And I picked up, today I picked up a papaya tree for $20. And what else? A really cool cactus. So I'm going to eventually take the cactuses out of their pots and put them right into the ground and then just free up those pots and use them for vegetables. But uh, let's go see what's going on, shall we? I mean, just big progress just from the few days um, that have passed since I did my last video. All right, here we go. It's a gorgeous day out. Very little humidity, 83 degrees. My beans here, they're cranberry beans, they're flowering and you can see beans are starting to form on them. And I just uh, fertilized. I, I have a great setup now for fertilizing. Um, you can see my sweet potatoes have really taken off since the last time, the onions, everything looks really, really good. Um, but there's, I don't even know if that's a rhubarb over there. It doesn't look like a rhubarb plant, but it's some vegetable, that thing that's on its own. And we'll just see what it turns out to be. But over right here in the corner, and this is where we're going to put our, <clears throat> our grill. But this is my rain barrel. You can see it has a spout down here. So um, I was using this fish fertilizer. And I'll show you what I did that really, really worked. Let's go over to the fish for life, to the bucket I used. So if you don't have any of these orange buckets, or not orange, but uh, rubber buckets, do yourself a favor. They really are handy. They're light and they're bendable. So I filled up this bucket with a fertilizer and the rainwater from my barrel. And then it bends, so it acts as a source. Oh <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, let me turn that around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it acts as a spout. It really worked. So that's my tip, is get a couple of these rubber buckets because they are pliable and they're great for pouring. Oh, a branch fell in my onions. The onions are picking up. Again, the scallops are much happier than my onions are, but the onions are, they're, you know, they're making some progress. Here we go. See how nice everything looks. Kale, more kale, arugula, celery. Whoops. Celery. I don't know, label fell off. I need three hands. There we go. The lettuce, that's not gonna do well, but I have something I'm gonna plant there instead. It's called a coo, coo cumin, something like that. And it's a combination of cantaloupe and watermelon. And again, I'll go vertical. Carrots, parsnips. I, last time I showed my kale here, there's a lot of it in this in this uh, pot. Um, I called it Thunderhead, but it's Thousand Head Kale. And um, you can see some bugs are, you know, eat it a little bit, but see, it's not too bad though. My tomato plants, still looking good, still flowering, just fertilized it. When you have things in pots and buckets, there's my 
dwarf tomatoes, papaya that I'm starting, pepper. Um, when you have things in pots, I do recommend that you don't fill your pots all the way up so you can continue to add soil as your plant is growing. This is a uh, something that you have next to your fireplace that holds your your gizmos for your fireplace and I use it to hold my garden tools. I just couldn't get rid of him because he, he's vintage and it's got that little dog head so now I'm using it in the garden. I have to stake up these tomatoes they're going pretty crazy here. Look at my passion fruit. He's grown like two inches. He's up there now. This one's taking off. They all are. This I just planted just a little wheel, a bit ago. Believe this is a squash. I got to get him staked up. I've got stakes coming. I ran out of stakes. Mint I planted. Blueberries I moved out of the sun. I was reading that they don't really like direct sun so now I have them over here. But I've got my plan now. I know what I'm going to do. So you can see how the grass grows right up to the, to the fence. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to actually get rid of the grass. I'm going to come in about two, three feet. So that's just soil and that will be all be plants. Okay, just a minute. Something's biting me. Okay. And some of these plants I'm going to put in the ground. Like that elephant ear I'm going to put in the ground. Look at, finally, flowers for my grapefruit tree. Look at that. I've been working on these trees. So I'm going to move him a little bit further back. Look at my old crop. <laughs> He exploded. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't that the most beautiful plant? And then I've got my squash growing up this post. These are eggplants. They're going to get too big to be in there. I'm going to have to move them. So now we're waiting for Oh, this is the grapefruit. That's the tangerine. So we're waiting for this. I think this is just a slower growing tree. You can see all the new growth coming up there. I got a moringa tree. Check him out. So he's going in the ground tomorrow. And then I'll put something else in that pot. But I've wanted a moringa tree for a long time. I do want to have two or three of them back here. My papaya is going to go over there on the grass, kind of in the center. So, yeah. I come out here and I have to tie it up more every day. That's how fast they grow. And I use green plastic string to tie it up because it doesn't cut into the plant you never want to cut uh, tie it too tight look at that squash it's coming out beautiful no idea what this is the label fell off see all the millions of flowers but I showed you that the other day and over here Again, have tied things up. Squashes growing. My pinto beans are starting to flower. And my figs are starting to really look pretty good. Let's see, where's there another fig? There's a bunch of them, and now that I'm looking for them, I can't see them. There they are. So I'll put my papaya tree here. All right, so I ordered some raised beds and they're made out of metal. 
and I'm going to put them close to the house. So they're going to come out and they're going to come onto the grass and I'm going to cut away the part of the grass that they come onto so that they sit right on the ground. But they're not going to be next to each other. There's going to be five of them. And I'm going to leave space in between to plant other things like grasses, flowers, whatever. And then I'll put a trellis on the back of each raised bed and then grow something that climbs a trellis. It can be flowers, it can be, it can be beans, it can be anything. I was thinking about putting a fruit tree right here in the corner, which I might do, avocado tree right there. And of course, flowers along the path. It's done well, hasn't it? Look at this. <laughs> it just is growing so fast. Waiting for more flowers. The beans are doing well. See all the buds coming out. They're just climbing everywhere. Dwarf tomato plants. Doing really well. Beans. Started to clean out the rocks here and we put them over against the fence because there's a big gaping hole between our property and that. And a lot of times you'll get critters running underneath, so we're blocking that. Almost time to pick that watermelon. Those peppers are getting nice and fat. And time to use some of these herbs. Yeah, I'm pleased with it. Really nice. And I really loved this setup. This was great. It worked really well. And though that bucket was heavy with water in it, that rubber bucket, um, I could still manage it. Okay. So, um, I just get bit out there. Um, I forgot to spray the back of my legs. Um, so, July 17th, sorry about my hand. July 17th um, will be when the landscaping company is going to come and really fill in and do the work around the shed. And then that will be done. And then I want them to go over I think, in August and help me with cutting away that grass and planting a bunch of plants along the fence and further in. And I want flowers, grasses. I want it to be really um, colorful. So, you know, anything that climbs and, and has flowers, I'm up for, um, you know. And then I will fill it out with putting things in the ground or putting things in pots, but it's time to really bring a lot of flowers because it is tropical here, you know. And flowers do really well if you have the right flowers. I mean, the hibiscus, the hotter it gets, the more they like it. And they're, just, they're a spectacular flower. So, but we have a lot of those on our property. So um, I want to try some different things. But yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? I'll tell you, it beats gardening in Michigan. And you know, there's, there's, some, there's some drawbacks. I mean, it's hot, um, but I've gotten used to it and I don't stay out here for a long period of time, you know? And if you could get out in the morning, you can be out two, three hours and, and that's good, you know? And you know, I mean, there's a lot to do. I live in Florida and go to the beach and swimming pool. I'm a writer, I can read, uh, you know, I'm semi-retired, sorta. I mean, I'm still teaching a lot, but you know, there's really time to do everything. So, yeah, you guys. Gardening's where it's at. 
How can you ever get tired of watching food grow? I just don't know. Or watching flowers open up and bloom. Or watching bees fall asleep in the middle of a flower. I mean, it negates all drama. It really does. Well, anyways, Radical Gardener, from my garden to yours. May your garden always grow. You know I'm sending you a ton of love, don't you? Okay, goodbye.